This is the Tools to Thrive podcast with Evelyn Cook, where we uncover powerful business tools that will help you scale your business so you can retire richer than you ever dreamed possible. Hi, Evelyn Cook here with Cook CPA Group, and this is our second installment of Tools to Thrive. And here next to you, we're going to be interviewing a winery grape farming couple today, Rodney and Gayla Schatz. They are the owners and proprietors of Pelletier Wineries. So I'll just go ahead and start chatting with them and we'll have our continuing fascinating conversation about accounting and running a business and running people, leadership skills, all those fun things that we like to kind of obsess over here at Cook CPA. <laughs> so go ahead and kind of share a little bit story of like how you guys got into farming grapes. Okay, well thanks for coming out, Evelyn. Appreciate that first uh, and foremost. So. Um, I was born into this situation, basically, <laughs> family farmed, um, so I would be third generation oh, wow. okay. in the grape side of things. And, you know, after college, we we bought this particular property where we sit right now. What was your, how many acres was your initial, initial purchase? Uh, 39, oh, wow. 39 okay. acres, and uh, so it had vineyard on it, and there was uh, some bare ground, and we planted vineyard. and. Um, not to mention that we just took that vineyard out this year after, um, uh, how many years has that been already? <laughs> it was 1985. So. We did buy this property before we bought a home, so <laughs> that'll tell you something. <laughs> so that's kind of where your priorities are, I right? I cried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, quite a few years. But anyway, um, so we started here with this and then farmed it, and eventually um, I started... Uh, speculating in the market with wine and I was having the wine produced at other wineries or in various places around the state started brokering and things and one thing led to another uh, mostly dissatisfaction with the products that were I was paying to be made okay. and you know lost control of it because I wasn't in charge of it and so that led to well let's build the winery and so what year was are. it that you built the winery so we started in 2001 okay. to build it so we're at 2020 now. 20 yeah. years next year. Wow. Coming up on 20 years. Wow. So, yeah. So there Need you go. About 15 years. No, right. How many years of just going grapes? The Pri prior to that. 35. Uh, yeah. So if we started in 85, that would have been yeah. another 15. Yeah. yeah. So 15 years graping. Yeah. So 35 really on this site yeah. growing grapes. Yeah. And we, you know, farm in other um, areas around Lodi other ranches and things so but this is primary spot and um seemed like a good location to build a winery since you lived uh, here you finally so bought a house we <laughs> <laughs> eventually well up and down the traction line here if you go south of here um there's wineries all dotted all the way along that traction yeah. line yeah doesn't mean anything other than the fact that you know the zoning of the property was a little bit easier for people to stomach in the county to oh. say yeah it's an appropriate place okay. so okay and the neighbors were quite generous and we built a small facility and then it's expanded probably four or five times the size of what we started with so so you gotta yeah. have, at what point did you start becoming involved daily in operations i think since we built the winery actually before that i was not involved really just doing payroll so now he needs time to drive around to all the vineyards so here i am yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, it's it, she's involved with the project, let's put yeah, it that yeah. way. So as it started, it wasn't much. Now it's pretty intense, and so she's here full time. So. Yeah. And then how many employees do you have now currently? Um, under 49. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but, um, but including both sides, the farming side and the winery side, at, l at least 40, 45 people. Okay. Yeah. Full time. Full time, yeah. yeah. All right, so Do you want to taste the wine? Oh, yeah. So Pop it. Let's drink. There you go. Okay. What is it? So this is our Sauvignon Blanc, and it's one of my favorites, so that's why I chose it for today. So our winemaker is uh, Susie Vasquez, and she is um, from Bolivia. So she's first generation here. Still has a slight accent. Mm -hmm. But very, very good winemaker. She's fit in with our program quite well. Mm -hmm. And has really turned around the whole winemaking scenario in this winery in that the 
the quality and the standards are quite high and so she's building a nice reputation not only for us but for herself she's done mm. very well oh, and, so uh, uh, I always want to let everybody know that it's not just the winemaker by the way the, the <laughs> whole team here you know she can do what she can do but without the support mm -hmm. even you know on the accounting side <laughs> And the great or farmer. The finance. Um, yeah, it just doesn't happen. By yeah, itself. well, I remember this just working with her is that she really likes using the inventory software. Um, <laughs> yes. A lot of times the winemakers are more of the artist inclination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't no, really totally understand hands on. the back end yeah. of how you have to control costs and track things and make sure that as you're transferring from one tank to another, that actually is being tracked. And she actually really. She likes to she, be hands-on. Yeah, She's she really takes responsibility for that, which is yeah. The first year nice we were that she was with us, we had a little small block of um, uh, Chenin Blanc grapes that, for whatever reason, we had control of about five tons of these grapes, and we had to hand pick them. She went out there with the crew, <laughs> and picked them. <laughs> that uh, you know, really made a statement to the crew and everybody that she's out there getting dirty and you know cutting Isn't the that grapes. Like if someone really really un unreasonable hour that you pick grapes well when you hand, it was you know five in the morning they were starting so yeah it was that's not unreasonable in our world but <laughs> no, no it's not <laughs> well and, and when you have a small business it's really important that everybody is like family and everybody's willing to wear many hats so uh, yeah, you have a really good team of people we're fortunate yeah. yes mm -hmm. yes yeah it's which is the key if yeah. you don't have the whole, it's all about good people. We can't do everything no. by far. Yeah. And so. And good accounting, somebody we can rely on. Yes. Thank you, Evelyn, for answering the phone when I call in yes. all hours. Cheers. 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 We'll, we'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you find these good people? You think they're coming in the culture that you guys have created, mm. or is it that you're really? Well, there's one that just walked in the door now. You know what? Um, how do you find them? I don't know. I think. Sometimes you have to work with um, with them and explain what you do and try and pull the best out of them. And either they get it or they don't. Mm -hmm. And then there's a decision point. And unfortunately, sometimes we lose good people to other companies. Sure. Just because. It's actually you know, a really good compliment that someone came here, increased their skill set. Yeah, it's and like we're being became more sometimes. marketable. Well, when you're of that. when you are a small business and you can only do so much, your goal for them is to to help them create the best in them. Yeah, and yeah. we wish them well, just as as we started and continue yeah. to grow little by little. And but many of them have been with us for twenty five years, and um, I would bet most people have been with us at least ten years. Uh, of of our forty yeah, something I just know working with employees, you, you bring in a person and they start off kind of I'm saying kind of maybe an elementary level. Mm -hmm. Then you see that person's progression. At least on the yeah. accounting side, I can see that progression of what they yes. they come that strength right. and their commitment and they really care, right. which is nice to see. And I, you know, my whole thing I try to think I do this is tell everybody I, I don't intend you to stay here. You, you should use this as the next step. Mm -hmm. You know, to go to whatever you're going to do. Um, now I'm not trying to tell my winemaker, I, was my say, I think I'm going to have to hurt him now. But, <laughs> but no, anybody that comes and, and starts out, um, you know, they should strive to do their best, but understand that if you're moving on, you, you don't, you're not locked down here. Yeah. You know, yeah. use us. But we expect to get, you know, something in return, so. Yeah. She's definitely changed things. Everyone has in some, yeah. some way. You do need a, a large support system. <laughs> Yes. to make something like this yeah. work because there are so many elements and no one is expert at every single element and certainly i don't know how to make wine i know how to taste it i know what i like um but saying that that is one thing that we do do here is we try to do everything in-house yes and that might even be down to constructing things or <laughs> when we need Such an expert we have to bring them in but you actually yeah. have your person weld things right yeah, yeah. so yeah. quinn who you know has built the fence and guys that did the stone work around the property and even like she's pointing out the the pallet the, the pallet table and the and pallet all walls the walls and things in this room were um, built by our own staff Ian, uh, vendor did that for us when he was here and then he went for another opportunity and mm -hmm. you know it evolved but he did a I think that gets your mind off of things and 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 we can just walk away and and thankfully we do have that great staff that we we can, we're, we can do it yeah so if they're you know, if everything's 
running, there's always issues, but if everything's running relatively smoothly, the way to do it is to always try to be gone. <laughs> I was just thinking and that, And then yeah. be ready with the problem. So <laughs> if we could go away, go. Yes. And every, you know, kind of with the employees to some degree, I don't, if, if they have a chance to do something or whatever, we, we say go. We need you here during the harvest full time, mm -hmm, but right. take your breaks when you can and, you know, enjoy. So, yeah. yeah. Terrible philosophy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you're also traveling around the world, around the country, kind of doing different um, tastings too. Yeah. There's so many different opportunities. It's you cannot do it all, and, and you do count on them, and they've been great. Yeah. So, so, so with this year with, or this spring and summer with this uh, COVID, um, in was it July we went? We left in July, like late July, and we flew all around the country and got to yeah. see what we got to see, but you know with limitations because of. COVID yeah. and having to wear but visited and some of the distributors just to see you know, what was happening in their world and how they're dealing with things and what they for, could foresee changes, uh, whether it be what's happening in the market internationally because we are affected. Mm -hmm. And so it, you, when you're there thing. in person, you definitely get a different perspective than you would on the phone oh, or okay. even on a Zoom call. They just seem to open up more. Okay, there's less barriers, so you just feel more comfortable. The fact that yeah. you took that time to go out there and meet with them in person. Yeah, absolutely. Most people yeah. aren't doing that right now, potentially. None of them are. Right. I mean, I mean, getting in an airplane to fly commercially is pretty tough. Yeah. Now, today, it might be a little different here at Thanksgiving, but, man, all summer long, it was locked down. Yeah. Big yeah. time. Yeah. So, yeah. So other than COVID, what have been some kind of the, the maybe two or three unexpected challenges you've encountered running a business from what you thought when you bought first bought your 39 acres to where you are now like what are some things that kind of well you would I, do differently we, or what you've learned from we didn't lay anybody off we didn't yeah. do we didn't change anything that we did here what what changed were some of the ways that we were selling wine and uh the fact that restaurants would be closed around the country who would have thought yeah, I mean, it just really changed the way people were buying wine. So now they're buying wine from their grocery store or online. You know, they're not on premise, meaning they're not at a restaurant or you know, the baseball park or whatever. And and so that dramatically changed where we would, in one case, make keg wine to sell to restaurant chains that stopped hmm. and then we were backed up and then they kind of opened up in was it late summer, things were starting to come back yeah. to normal. We were making kegs again. Well, now it stopped, and so we're backed up again. So that's been an up and down. In so the tasting, tasting room, room didn't really get to reopen until like once that sometime in July, right? Uh, well, there were different, dr different regulations throughout. So we've just tried to adapt as best we can. And, um, and, and we've done okay. It was, you know. Our fearless governor changed rules daily. Literally, <laughs> yes, so, it's, it's still happening. You know, but yeah, and it's still happening. But so. but before all of this, um, internationally, it, there there were some changes that the administration made that helped the American wine industry. Clearly, maybe not the brokers, who, the importers, but mm. for sure the growers. Oh, okay. And um, and that's what we believe we still are, even though we're sitting here in this tasting room today and we do have a winery. I mean, at heart, we are growers and, uh, and, and support California. He's a past chair of the California Association of Wine Grape Growers and also locally a chair of the Lodi Wine Grape Commission. And so we believe in farming and we want to do everything to support that and, and especially in America and specifically California. So, yeah, like with all the imports coming so in the grapes, regulations yeah. helped helped us, and not only do we sell maybe in the bottle internationally, we also ship containers of wine to other countries that will then bottle over overseas, oh, okay. and and it'll say American. One of the one of the brands is called the American Dream, and huh. it's 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 very cool. We flew to actually see it in the stores. And I think that for us, that was 
like wow we finally have, are making an impact not just here yeah. but we're yeah. we're telling the world that a California and America and America and can make wine a, a that we all love not a yeah. napa fancy napa it's never great right really good right Lodi grape right right, right. so that well. was very very exciting and it's been a successful it, it did slow down even they've slowed down a little bit but it continues to grow and yeah, uh, we one hope. of my distillery clients in Chicago actually purchased your grapes to make brandy. Right, right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going over their books. I'm like, oh, what? Well, you got some grapes from them. That's really cool. Because <laughs> okay, I think I just sort of email in direction at one point in time. Yes. Yeah. And then once their production got up and running, they started doing that there. So yeah. when you're a grower, it's not just about what you see in the bottle that says our name. It could be in a different name. And it still came from our vineyards. Okay. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So you guys do grape growing the winery, and then you also do some custom proce processing. So what were some of the decision decision factors that kind of inspired you to go down? Well, when we built the winery, that was kind of the angle, was not just to um, vertically integrate our, our grapes into wine and sell them as wine, but also the opportunity that there is a need for custom crush in the area. And whereas I said when I started, I was going to other wineries mm -hmm. and paying them to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, over time it worked, but, you know, the satisfaction level wasn't that great. And then you try and bring it into, you know, your own house and control it, which we did. And so now we go out and do some custom work, helps pay the bills. Um, I wouldn't say it's a huge part of the business, but, um, it's we're able to do it and it's, mm -hmm. it's it, a good move, it helps so. income flow when you're just a grower you get paychecks just one time a year basically yeah mm -hmm. and so then when we started into you know putting it into a bottle now you spread some of it out and yeah. then when you do the processing or the harvesting or whatever else we do it kind of helps you get through all of those times yeah. and and as a grower there were years where well, I remember one year in particular where we didn't even sell the vi the grapes. It was I think we only had Zinfandel at the time, which Lodi's known for Zinfandel, and nobody wanted them. Yeah. The price got so high. The next year, it just nobody wanted it. So you, we picked. We paid to harvest. We paid to get, produce all that year, and and then That's not fun. a paycheck at the end of the year. Oh, so this has also allowed us to okay make that decision do we want to just shake them onto the ground or do we want to bring them in and hope you, you don't want to be in that position but Correct. we have the ability mm -hmm. to do it so you've, got, so you've got some economic diversity now yeah you know exactly. just dependent yeah. On, yeah options yeah. Yeah. <laughs> keep your options open so right but and then you know i'll always say that if, if the wine's good it sells it will not always fetch the price that you want <laughs> <laughs> but you'll, you know, it's competition with the other guy that's selling bulk wine, and so mm -hmm. you need to, to do better than them. Right. And that is and the goal, to do the best that yeah, we can so. and in, and keep getting better every year. And I think that in the number of, of cases that we're selling of our own, and even on the bulk side, we're earning that respect. How many cases do you guys usually sell each year? In a good, in a non, not in a non-COVID year, <laughs> five, six thousand. Oh no, more than that. Yeah, probably in the thirty to forty thousand range. Right. It depends on the okay. year, and that would include all the labels. There's other tiers, not just Peltier. But right? not including some of the private labels that would increase then. Yeah, in, but private label stuff, you know, it's a whole other, there's a whole other option business. Yeah, there. that's a, <laughs> or it's a so challenging matter, isn't it? Though those special strategy. projects that come your way, like we want to go try this, and it's like, yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. That's interesting too, in that you know most people think all these wines on the shelf in the grocery store. There's how many million to choose from, right? There's usually two big alleys full. Ninety percent of that's owned by about eight companies. Now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Most of it's just kind of a big lie to them, but they don't really all understand it. <laughs> all the different labels. So yeah. yeah. So can you explain a little bit about the Lodi Wine Grape Commission mm -hmm. is, I gather, different than other local grape commissions where the quality control standards and all that, the farming standards, like not every region, like the Amador region, doesn't have that same standard. Yeah, is, that, is that correct? That's correct. So the, so the commission part of it is, is basically um, uh, a state law. Okay, so the commission 
uh, is chartered under the state of California. So we're actually an entity of the state. The Lodi Wine Grape Commission belongs to the state of California, quote unquote. Now, saying that, what it means is we're basically able to tax ourselves and keep the money that we tax ourselves with here in our district and we use it for education and promotion and research and um, you know for the good of our own group so the other parts of the state and I think uh, I believe Sonoma County still has a commission and Lake County at one time did I don't know if they still do or not but but there's only a handful of counties that have a commission or districts that have a commission and mainly the rub on that is is because uh, um, um, a district like Napa has so many wineries you know almost an equal number of winery versus growers so mm. for us oh, okay. it's a much easier thing to build a coalition because it's mostly growers mm -hmm. and they're all like okay if we all put our money together we're gonna keep it here and we're gonna do something smart with it sure sure whereas when you're you're split up the you know economically between I'm making wine how do, do we promote the wine do we promote the game you know what do we yeah, do it's a bit more difficult and so mm -hmm. the Commission got started on that on that leg and that we were able to pull it together and everybody stuck with it for uh, it's coming up on 30 years I think mm -hmm. it's okay. been a long time okay. and so we have to vote it in every five years and um, and it takes a majority of the acreage or a majority of the growers to pass it usually it's passing in both directions and you know like anything else there's controversy over the years we hope it stays and the result is a lot more wineries in Lodi um, but we're still part of the industry where you know the price of grapes isn't depicted by what the Commission can go out and promote we can promote ourselves and help that but we're still at the mercy of the marketplace okay. and so to say it directly has helped everybody probably not I always like to say if you're gonna try help yourself you'll probably get a lot out of it mm -hmm. if you're just gonna wait around in the wings for somebody to do it it'll never happen because there's like some farming standards that if someone well there's another element so they developed also Lodi rules which is a sustainable sustainability program and it's it's more stringent than the California's version so it was the first yes and what it means is a third-party certification on um, not so what it's not is is organic it's sustainable meaning you're judging yourself year after year on what you do in the vineyard to improve yourself and that's everything from soil to irrigation and pest management and I mean every aspect mm -hmm. And the, and the goal is improving yourself, meaning do I do a better job of growing the grapes and make better wine or better grapes to make wine while at the same time still making money to do. <laughs> That's part of sustainability business. as well. Sustainability <laughs> is also sure, being profitable. Sure. So you can't be, um, you know, so tunnel vision that I'm just going to be organic and, and this is how it's going to be and then all of a sudden you get wiped out by locusts one day because you weren't prepared and you can't spray them that that's not really sustainable that's mm. kind of oh, stupid sure yeah <laughs> so, yeah so that's where we're at but so, so um, sustainable is more of a traditional farming practice yeah. it's just always doing best to replenish just, just the soil saying, yeah. hey I, do i really need all that fertilizer yeah can i get by with a different kind can i um use a different type can i go to just organic manures let's say well, as an example each year you're audited and you need to do better yeah and so a hundred percent of our vineyards are in the what I roll sustainability oh, program okay. and it's it's something that we pay into and we believe in and uh, we want this to continue it, on it's been hugely successful um, for the district because other districts even use our program we'll license it to it's certainly um, Clarksburg area oh, okay. in the Delta or I know in Sonoma <laughs> County there's a few there's people that are using it there's actually an international twist to it too because we have an Israeli uh, wine growing um, entity that is using our Lodi rules program as really well. yes oh that's really so, cool yeah really cool oh, I'll have to go to Israel then yeah yeah when we can flock see yeah, <laughs> yeah we can when fly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now Texas what about I, know, I didn't realize that uh -huh. Texas Yes. With my potential hunting dog lives. Yes. Um, Fredericksburg, Texas is oh, actually, yeah. I think, the fifth largest region in wine. 
in yeah. the country. I didn't had no idea that Texas grew wine. That's the that Napa is. of Texas. Is it really? Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's really cool. It, it is. is. Okay. Yeah, a neat place. Um, Have you guys been there? Oh, yeah. We've sold grapes. No, we actually bulk wine. Yeah. And if you go, it it is very kind of Napa esque, but more Texas size, stretched <laughs> out. <laughs> Charming little town. They're very nice. And yeah, it's it, yeah, welcoming. Yeah. Right, it seems like a very touristy little, mm -hmm. yeah. little area. There. You, yeah. you could ask any question and they're not going to criticize you. <laughs> so I think that's what's so nice about it. You, you know, is, is it tastes like chocolate. Is there chocolate in this wine? Well, no, but. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so so there's some growing up to do, you know, <laughs> just to get in the right. program, but uh, they are very, the, the the people of Texas definitely support their wines. Right. They are all behind them. But they, they are allowed well. to bring, in, if they have an issue, they're allowed to bring in grapes there and is still. Some California fruit. Oh, yes, okay. and, okay. and bulk wine because we've yeah. sold into the state and, and other states as yeah. well. Yeah. A truck will leave here and yeah. bring it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's such a big state. They're, they're really growing the grapes out in Lubbock, West Texas, and then trucking them. Well, the weather Gosh, is... got to be six, eight hour drive to some of these wineries Ooh. in Fredericksburg. Wow. So there's a dynamic there that, you know, the population is Austin and what San Antonio and Frederick is right. kind of in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it in Lubbock that we met Devin? Yeah, we got to meet Devin Nunez's father in a bar <laughs> in Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> well, that was pretty cool. Game, Eden State. It was a pretty interesting yes. day. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now is your time to thrive. To learn more about how Evelyn Cook can help you scale your business with tools to thrive, visit www.cookcpagroup.com.